Howdy folks, John here from rchelicopterfun.com. I'm just finishing up the final touches on my little RC Ingenuity coaxial heli, which I've built using the guts out of an old uh, Blade MCX, along with a little time on uh, Tinkercad to 3D print the uh, lightweight frame assembly that's inside. Like many RC helicopter and science enthusiasts, I've been glued to NASA's website over the past couple of weeks since the Perseverance landed safe and sound on Mars. You know, eagerly awaiting the first spool up of the uh, Ingenuity helicopter. If all goes well, this will be the first non-rocket powered flight outside of our own atmosphere. Really, it doesn't get any cooler than that. Now, ever since I heard of this mission and the fact they would be sending a small coaxial helicopter to fly in the thin Martian atmosphere as proof of concept, you know, I was hooked, bringing back flashbacks of Amy's little coaxial heli from the movie Red Planet. So, while waiting for the battery pack to charge in my little Ingenuity for its first test flights, I thought it would be interesting for all of us heli heads to take a close-up look at the real Ingenuity's technology. You know, specifically the rotor system to see what, if any, similarities might be shared between it and our hobby-grade egg beaters. We already know the Ingenuity is using a coaxial rotor system, which was chosen primarily for its lift efficiency. For any of you who have flown little micro coaxials like this before, you know just how efficient they are. 100% of the power is going towards the lift. There's no tail rotor using up power to counter the reactive torque off the main rotor. The counter-rotating blades on the coaxial are nullifying the torque reaction from each. If you want to know more about coaxial design and how it works on our little models, I'll put a link to a page on my website below in the description that covers their operation in more detail. Now while Mars' gravity is only about a third of Earth's, its atmosphere is very thin at around 1% of Earth's. So lift efficiency from a small battery pack is obviously critical. Coaxials also offer good stability and can be packed down to its small size, which was another important consideration. Now let's take a close-up look at the rotor system on the Ingenuity. First thing we notice is the large foam core carbon fiber high lift rotor blades. Similar in material and construction to our carbon blades, but much different in shape than the symmetrical airfoils that we use on our collective pitch RC helicopters. Not dissimilar, however, to what we see on micro fixed pitched RC helicopters and little coaxials, very similar shape. Again, maximum lift efficiency is the rule. The Ingenuity's rotor RPM is also very similar to what we would run on a standard collective pitch helicopter of similar rotor diameter. NASA and JPL state the Ingenuity's rotors will be spinning at around 2400 RPM, which is smack dab in the middle of the 2000 to 2800 RPM range I can run on this 500 size heli, which has a similar rotor diameter of about 1150 millimeters, you know, roughly four feet. Of course, the Ingenuity has two four-foot diameter rotors spinning at that speed, along with the high-lift rotor blades to deal with that thin Martian atmosphere. Looking at the blade roots up close, I'm guessing the Ingenuity is using a rigid rotor system with no head dampening whatsoever, but that is just a guess. You know, would you even need head dampening in such a thin atmosphere? Leave comments below. The design element on these rotors that literally pop out are these horns on the root of each rotor blade. There is very little information I can find on their purpose, but from the angle they are positioned on the blade roots, my best guess is they are some sort of counterbalance, perhaps to balance out the rotational loading along the blade pitch axis. Maybe they offer some dampening as well. Comments welcome if you know otherwise. Getting past those horns, we are greeted to more familiar RC helicopter rotor system components. The Ingenuity appears to be using a common 120 degree ECCPM swash layout with three servos connected to each swash plate through linkage arms and ball links. Very similar to the arrangement to what is used on this 500 size helicopter to move the swash plate up and down, left and right, forwards and backwards. We can see two of Ingenuity's swash plate servos in this photo. The third is hidden behind the swash plate and mast. Being a coaxial, it has two swash plates for each rotor, and the materials are of course more exotic with the swash being made out of titanium instead of aluminum for maximum weight savings, and these most certainly aren't run-of-the-mill hobby-grade servos. 
but we can see the motor, gearbox, and likely the electronics under this cover. Ah yes, the mast. This is a fixed mast. It doesn't spin like conventional helicopter masts do. It's obviously hollow for all the wiring to pass through from the antenna and solar panel on the top down to all the wiring from the six servos as well as the wires from the two direct drive brushless motors. Yepers, the Ingenuity is using direct drive main motors which our hobby is just starting to embrace on a few smaller helicopters such as this little OMPM2 where we can see the direct drive motor is attached directly to the rotor mast or rotor shaft driving it you know, compared to the more traditional way of doing things using a um, small pinion gear on the motor deriving a main gear that is attached to the mast. The main difference with the Ingenuity is its brushless direct drive motors are not spinning the mast. Their stator in the motor is instead firmly clamped around the fixed mast with the outer bell directly attached to the rotor head and spinning it. So these would be classified as an outrunner brushless motor, very similar to uh, the little M2s here, except the outrunner here would be up on the rotor head driving it directly. Back to the upper half of the swash plates. Oh, for those that don't know what a swash plate does, it connects the non-rotating components of the control system on a helicopter, in this case the servos, to the rotating control components of a helicopter, the rotor blades. So the bottom half of the swash doesn't spin, the upper half does. The Ingenuity is using what we term in the hobby as a direct flight control, also known as DFC, style blade grip linkage system. If you want to know more about DFC, I'll put a link uh, in the description to an article on my site that explains it in detail. Anyway, the DFC arms look like standard RC helicopter radius arms, with the exception of these keyways and accompanying arms with balls that fit into those keyways. There's very little info I can find on their function, but after looking at several photos up close of the Ingenuity while stored on the belly of the Perseverance, along with this short video clip that also shows those linkage arm balls inserted into the keyways of the radius arms, this has to be to lock the rotor system, both rotationally as well as locking the swash plate from movement. My best guess is they are using a spring-loaded cam or something similar, and once Ingenuity has been safely deployed on the surface of Mars, they will spin the upper and lower rotors so those little balls are guided out of the radius arms and pop out of the lock position. Again, that is just a guess, and I welcome comments if you know of another purpose or how they are actually articulated. So that pretty much covers the Ingenuity's rotor system from top to bottom. Yeah, it's so cool to see many similarities to our hobby-grade RC helicopters rotor systems along with the differences as well. Now I should point out, unlike our little fixed pitched micro coaxial RC helicopters that uh, vary the two rotor RPMs to change the reactive torque to induce yaw movement, the full size Ingenuity collective pitch coaxial rotor system is most likely spinning both rotors at a fixed RPM and creating reactive torque changes between both rotors for yaw control by changing the collective angle of each rotor. You know, just like a full-size coaxial helicopter does. As NASA and JPL point out, the Ingenuity is a proof of concept and technology demonstration very much like the Wright brothers' first power flight was. The Ingenuity has a maximum flight time of about 90 seconds and won't be getting much higher than perhaps 15 feet or so off the ground. <laughs> Very much like my first attempt at piloting an RC helicopter. If you're interested in the Ingenuity and all the technology behind it, I have a link to NASA's Ingenuity page on their site below which covers much more. Now, let's see if my little Ingenuity will actually be able to lift off and perhaps show another proof of concept. That concept being, would an RC version of the Ingenuity be a popular model that an RC manufacturer might consider putting into production? Your comments and thoughts are welcome. Time to spool up the little Ingenuity and see how it goes. <laughs> you know, I'm surprised that little micro coaxials aren't as popular as they once were. They still make great flying platforms. They're so stable. You can give the controls to anyone and they can fly them. God. 
It'll be interesting to see if any manufacturers jump on the microcoaxial bandwagon again and start making these things now that there's one flying on Mars. It'll be interesting to see if they become more popular. So, my take on the ingenuity. Thanks for watching, folks. We'll see you next time.